Okay, so we're going to look at um, uh, the halo alkanes, sometimes called the halogeno alkanes. Um, now, alkanes are not the chemistry of alkanes. Isn't that interesting? They don't really do very much, except when you set fires and they'll burn. Okay, um, the fires they're not. They don't undergo many interesting reactions, whereas if you stick a halogen atom onto a um, onto an alkane, that immediately makes it a lot more interesting and, and more reactive. And that's because if you remember halogens are fairly electronegative elements, and so that means that this bond between the carbon and the halogen is going to be polar, and you're going to have a delta positive, partial positive charge on the carbon. And of course, you'll have a partial positive charge on the partial negative charge on the chlorine so uh, partial positive charge there partial positive charge there okay and that and that makes them react with things um, and these things are called nucleophiles so things which love the nucleus really so that's things which uh, love positive charge Okay, and that's not a definition of a of a nucleophile. A definition of a, a nucleophile, as you'll see commonly, is um, a species with a lone pair, uh, which can donate a lone pair. Okay, we'll talk about that more uh, more detail. But if you think Right, so um, if you have OH minus, that is a pretty good nucleophile. Uh, right, why is it going to like positively charged areas? Well, because itself it's negatively charged, and also the oxygen atom is a very electronegative element. There's three pairs on that lone pair on the oxygen, we're just going to draw one. That lone pair is going to be very much attracted to the positive charge on the carbon here. Okay. So um, let's have a look at the um, uh, reaction. And uh, you find that uh, haloalkanes undergo nucleophilic substitution reactions, OK? Nucleophilic substitution. So if I write down an equation for that reaction, we're going to have to say something like, let's do this one bromoethane. So we're going to have. Um, CH3, CH2, Br. And what's going to happen is if you react that with OH minus, and that will be for with sodium hydroxide solution, what you're going to get is the bromine and the hydroxide are going to swap place, and you end up with CH3, CH2, OH, so you get an alcohol, and the bromine atom will come up, off as the Br minus ion. Okay, so that, that would be an equation. Let's, let's try and see what is going on there. And then we're going to come across uh, in, in this video this idea of how to show <coughs> reaction mechanisms. Okay, so. Uh, and there is a special way of showing reaction mechanisms, which we'll, we'll talk about in the next couple of minutes. Okay, so let's look at this reaction between bromoethane and sodium hydroxide in a bit more detail. All right, so I'll get rid of all that. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to draw my uh, bromoethane here. And I'm going to draw this, I'm going to draw this like a, a, um, a molecular orbital, okay, this bond. So this, we've got Okay, so there's your negative charge cloud in there, yeah. And why have I drawn it thicker at the bromine end? Of course, because bromine is electronegative, so that's going to get more than its fair share of the electrons in that in that bond. And the carbon there is not going to get enough of it, so that's going to be partial positive charge. And I'll just draw the hydrogens on here without drawing the the sort of electric charge cloud just draw it as a stick. Now let's have a think about um, the hydroxide ion. Okay, so OH minus 
here, the negative charge in it, and you have got three lone pairs on that oxygen, and you've got one bonding pair to the to the hydrogen. So let's try and draw that. So um, right, so I'll do the oxygen in blue. And I'm going to draw three lone pairs. Now, lone pairs are kind of this shape, aren't they? Do you remember? Yeah. And here's the bonding pair going to the hydrogen. And the whole thing has got one more electron than it should have. It's negatively charged. Um, right. Now, let's just have a look at this lone pair here. Okay. Now that's going to go start coming close towards this delta positive carbon. So what tends to happen is that charge cloud is dragged forward. Okay. So I'll draw it in a different color since it it's sort of it'll get stretched forward a little bit. Yeah. And it gets stretched forward some more until it's like that. And now you can see that that is been stretched forward so much that it is effectively forming a bonding, a covalent bond to the carbon. And of course, simultaneously while that happens, carbon cannot form five bonds. And that carbon now at the moment is forming five bonds. So as that as the blue stretches out and becomes the green bonding orbital there, what's going to happen to this um this um this this orbital here? The bonding orbital there that shrinks back and that becomes uh, essentially becomes a lone pair. And don't forget the bromine has got, you know, it's actually got three lone pairs, and it'll draw them like that. Okay, so that and then what what has happened there is we have re, we've uh, we've replaced the bromine with an OH group, and that's a reaction. Now, if you had to draw these um orbitals it's a bit confusing it takes a bit of time and it looks like that looks a bit of a mess so people have come up with a way of representing that using these curly arrows now a curly arrow means it's showing the movement of a pair of electrons So I'll show you uh, what how you draw this using curly arrow sort of notation. So you've got your your bromoethane and your hydroxide ion comes along. Now you don't have to draw all three; you just draw one lone pair. Those with one lone pair that's going to react. And here's this curly arrow. So that pair of electrons is going to go onto that carbon. And the electrons in this bond, they're going to both shrink back and go onto the bromine. So you draw that there. Now, these these are showing movements of lone pairs of electrons, of showing the curly arrows. They must always, because it's showing the movement of a pair of electrons, must come from either from, sorry, must come from one a bond or two a lone pair and you always draw them going two atoms um, now when if you look in mark schemes um, they ask you to draw a reaction mechanism they're very picky about where the bot where the <coughs> the arrows come from they must you've got to stick with those rules yeah they've got to come from um they've got to come from a bond or a lone pair and they must go to an atom okay so anyway just to finish off that we would so you'd have then you'd have you have formed ethanol And the bromine, because it's got both of those, yeah, it's got both of the electrons, yeah, and the pair of electrons in this bond, only one came from bromine, the other one came from carbon, so that doesn't really belong to the bromine. That's why the bromine has got, comes off as Br minus. Okay. And if you look also that uh, 
charge is being conserved because if you look on this side of the equation, look, you've got a neutral species, the bromoalkane, and you've got the negatively charged hydroxide ion. It goes, and then on this side, it goes to a neutral um, ethanol molecule. So that means the, the bromine coming off must have a negative charge so that you've got the same charges on both sides of the, of the equation. Okay, so that's our little introduction to reaction mechanism. Uh, it's the first mechanism we come across, and again, it is called nucleophilic substitution. The OH minus is the nucleophile, and it's substitution because you swap the OH minus for a Br minus. Okay, more, a lot more on reaction mechanisms to come anyway, but we'll leave that there now.